Now, do you expect me to believe that in 2014, the devil today doesn't mind when God's people multiply? He's okay with it. You know, the devil hated it back in Exodus chapter 1. He was grieved when God's people multiplied. But today, the devil wants us all to have children and, and, and raise godly children, right? No, the devil today is grieved when he sees God's people multiplying. And he says, come on, let's deal wisely with them. And you know what he's done to make God's people uh, have to not multiply? Or, or they don't have to, because in this story, we have people who continue to do right. But you know what the devil has done to try to stop God's people from multiplying? Is he says, you know what? Let's put them to work. And notably, he wants to put the women to work. Yeah. Put the women to work. That'll stop them from multiplying. Because what was the devil's answer in Exodus 1? He said, put them to work and then kill the ones that are conceived. And that's exactly what the devil's agenda is today. He says, number one, send the women to work. And then they won't be able to reproduce because they're not going to be able to miss work. They're not going to be able to take care of the kids. So they're going to be so busy with their job, they're going to be forced to use birth control. And then not only that, but the ones that they would conceive, we will slay them through what? Birth control pills? that do cause silent early abortions and also through abortion itself, yeah. surgical abortion itself. That's what God, or that's what the devil has promoted today. He's promoted women working and he's promoted abortion. Now the United States Department of Labor has these statistics for 2013 that women participating in the labor force in 2013 that are of a working age is 57.2%. And men working is 69.7%. It's not even that different. I mean, think about it. Today, men are working at a rate of about 70%, 69.7%. And women are working at a rate of about 57%. It's only about, what, a 12% difference between the men working versus the women working. It didn't used to be that way, folks. It used to be that men went out to work and the women stayed home. That was the norm. That was the accepted uh, societal norm that men would go to work and provide and that the women would stay home, marry, bear children, and guide the house. Amen. I think I read that in the Bible. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14, that women would use the New Testament. Look, I'm so sick of people rejecting the teachings of the Old Testament. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you're not of God. And the Old Testament is just as much God's word as the New Testament. Amen. I'm sick of this. Well, what about the New Testament? The New Testament teaches the same thing as the Old Testament. Amen. I mean, what do you think? It's like the Book of Mormon where it's just some other testament that just teaches totally different things. No, the New Testament confirms and strengthens the teachings of the Old Testament. And the same things are taught in both Old and New Testament. The reason we turn to the Old Testament a lot is because it's longer. The Old Testament is four times as long as the New Testament. So there's more scripture to preach from. Oh, you're always in the Old Testament. No, we're just in the Old Testament three or four times as much because there's more of it. Not even trying to do that. It's just the way that it works out because the New Testament is short. But this stuff is confirmed in the New Testament. The New Testament says that women should marry. I will, God's will, I will therefore that women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. That's what the Bible says. Are there women today who turn aside after Satan? I'm sure that there are. And you know what? One way to stop that would be if they would marry, bear children, and guide the house. Now, look, I understand that there are exceptions because there are women who are in situations and maybe they've mista made mistakes in the past or maybe they're suffering from mistakes that someone else made in their life or whatever. That's not the point. Okay, obviously people are in different situations for a variety of reasons. But the question is, what's God's will? The question is, what does God want us to do? Yeah, we can get in positions where we're in a situation that's not ideal through our sin or someone else's sin. But according to the Bible, there's a plan and it's called the family. And it's what we grow up in as children where we have a mother and a father raising us. This is the ideal situation, folks. A mother and a father raise us. Then we grow up 
and we get married and we leave our father and mother and go directly to our spouse and we cleave unto our wife or cleave unto the husband and we become one flesh and then we produce children together and have our own family. That is God's plan and the men go to work and the women stay home and bear children and guide the house. That's what the Bible teaches in both Old and New Testament. You say, what about me? I'm in this situation. I'm divorced. My husband left me or my husband doesn't provide. He doesn't have a job or he wants me to work. And so he's telling me to go to work. Look, I understand there are all these other situations, but that's not what the sermon's about today. The sermon's about the right way of doing things. I mean, we could talk about all the problems and all the wrong things and all the bad situations in the world, but that would take all night, wouldn't it? But you know what? There are plenty of people in this room that are not in a bad situation. There are plenty of men in this room that can go out and work and provide for their family. And that's what they need to be doing. And they need to be saying to their wives, Honey, you stay home and you have children and raise those children and I'll go out and bring home the bacon. That's what we need, a generation of God's people that be fruitful and multiply. I'm sure that not every single person in the nation of Israel was being fruitful and multiplying at this time. But in general... As a whole, the majority were. And that's the way it should be amongst God's people. Are there going to be exceptions to the rule? Of course. Are there some women who are barren and cannot have children? Well, eventually they always got a child in the Bible. Eventually. If they prayed and sought the Lord. Eventually they did. But either way, some had one child. Some had two children. God's not always going to choose to bless you with a lot of children. You know, Isaac and Rebecca were godly people. They waited 20 years and had a, a set of twins, and that's all they had. But you know what, though? That's all God gave them. They weren't purposely going out and using birth control to prevent. You know, God might give you, like he's given me eight children so far, and he's given some people one child, two children. Uh, other people, he, he's given even more than he's given me. You know, there was a guy in the Bible named He-Man that had 14 sons and three daughters. But whatever God gives me, I'm going to accept it as a blessing from God. But this story that we see playing out in Exodus chapter 1 is the devil's modus operandi in 2014 as well. Same thing. Put the women to work and then slay the unborn. That's the plan.